This video is to introduce you to the statistical mode of the Casio Graphical Calculator system. The calculator itself can do quite a lot more in statistics than I'm going to show you in this video, but this should give you an idea of how to access it all. Upon turning it on and going to the menu, we see this section here, statistics mode, which is number two. And again, we can access this by pressing the direction keys and enter, or simply by pressing the numbers in the bottom. Going into this, what we're presented with is like a spreadsheet. We have a series of lists, and this is where we're going to be putting our data in. You can see I've got some data already in my list one. Maybe that's not what I'm going to do. So I'm going to delete this list here. The way to do that is by going across to this arrow here, going along to the next set of menus, and you'll see there are two choices here, delete and delete all. Delete will just delete the entry in a particular cell. Delete all will say, do you want to delete the entire list? And I'm going to say yes, and that's how we can delete our data. OK, so to enter some data, first of all, we can enter a heading, which is really just a name for the uh, data. This may be useful if you're setting up several lists at the same time. So you might want to type something in here. Maybe I put something like H for height, so I know what that list is. And then I just enter the data in exactly the way that you would think. So let's put in 161 and 145. This is just a series of values. OK. And of course, it keeps on scrolling down to the next one as you need to. So we've now got all of our data into all of that. Maybe we want to do some calculations with this data. So again, looking at the different modes that we've got across the bottom, coming back to our original one, here, calc for calculation, this is where we're going to do most of our work. So pressing that, we then need to tell the calculator what we're doing. I would always advise going into the settings first of all. Here, we've got basically two choices, one variable statistics or two variable. So if we're just doing as we are here, where we're looking at height, we would just want the one variable statistics. Two variables when you're comparing, say, height and weight or something like that. So just looking at these top two, one variable, one variable x list is telling it where it's getting the information from, so list one. And of course, if we wanted to change this to a different list, we would say, go to list number five. So it's now taking the data from list five. Of course, this isn't the case for my data. I want list number one. One variable frequency, this is telling it where it's getting the values for the frequency. Now, in this case, I've just got the heights. I'll come back to this in just a second and show you what it is. But let's say just for this version, we've got our data in uh, list one, and each of them occurs once. So we'll come out of there. We then press the one variable button. Upon pressing that, it does a lot of calculations for us. We've got x bar, of course, the mean. It's telling us the sum of x, the sum of x squared, and sigma x and sx. Now, sigma x is the standard deviation. Those of you who are doing further maths A-level, you'll need sx, and I'll leave you to work out what that one is. But for everybody just doing standard A-level maths, sigma x is the standard deviation. It tells us n5. OK, so it's telling us there are five pieces of data. Notice also there's a little arrow over here telling us that there's a bit more information it's going to give us. So pressing the down button to scroll down, we get the minimum value for x, q1, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, the maximum value of x, so it's giving us some of those statistics that we might want for box and whisker plots, for example. Going down, it's giving us the mode. Well, in my data, each of them only occurred once, so the mode doesn't really mean anything here, but if you had lots of data, it would give you the mode as a valuable thing. And actually, there you go, it's showing us lots of modes because each of them occurs once. Scrolling down, yeah, the mode happens five times. There are five of them and so on. Usually, depending on your data, you won't have lots of modes here like that. OK, so you've got each of those calculations. Pressing exit, coming back here, um, I mentioned about the one variable values for the frequency. Well, let's say this was a different set of data and actually my frequencies, I'm just going to call this F for frequency, maybe there were three people who are 161 centimetres, two who are 145, four who are 152, one who's 187, and four who are 134. And there we go. So th that's now our data. So we've got a number of occurrences of this set of data. Going into the settings and now changing the frequency that it's taking the frequencies from list two. OK, so now it's going to understand that this is the data and this is how many times they appear. Pressing the one variable statistic, now obviously different calculations, it's giving us each of those. They're N14 now, because there were 14 pieces of data entered with all those 
uh, some of the frequencies and we've got each of those there and mode okay well I've obviously put two who were, had the same mode. I've now entered a different set of data here we can see I've got height and I've put weight in this column so now we have two variables in our statistics if we wanted to do any calculations with this we go into settings we're now looking at these two variable parts it's asking where am I getting the values from x from list 1 values of y from list 2 and each of these values occurs once in two variable statistics you're usually going to have a frequency of 1 coming back out of there now pressing the two variable button here it's going to calculate each of these values for x going to calculate each of them for y and we get things like sigma xy and so on appearing in each of those so we've got each of those there as well one of the most useful things about getting the calculator to do the calculations especially for things like sigma x the standard deviation is we can check our answers that we've got during an exam now in an exam you're going to need to show you're working so simply writing down this value for the standard deviation is not going to help um, but maybe you've made an error in your calculation. We can use the calculator to help us find out what's actually happened. If you go into the menu again and go back to our normal calculation mode, or run mode, pressing number one to access that, once we've got it to calculate each of those um, statistics, if we go into variables and the statistical variables, going into x, we can now use each of these values that it's showing us within our calculations. So there's sigma x, and of course we could calculate anything we wanted. We could do, uh, there's our x bar. Well, what did we have? We had sigma x divided by n, and so on. We can build up each of our calculations this way. So it's a very useful little set of menus, um, little set of options, to enable you to check your working. Did you get the same thing as the calculator did? Did you have, for example, the same as sigma x squared? And you can set up any calculations you need to in that way. Coming back to our stats mode, there are a lot of other things that we can do that are very, very useful, especially within A-level maths. We go into calculations, we'll see this part here, reg, or for regression. If we press that, it allows us lots of different options. Generally, in A-level maths, we're going to want to compare our data to a straight line. So pressing x, this is what's going to give us our straight line. These are x squared, x cubed, and so on. We're not really going to be using these much in A-level maths, but we press that one and it gives us two options. So these are the equations of the line of regression ax plus b and a plus bx. Now these are basically the same thing, different countries use them in slightly different formats. I'm going to use ax plus b, it doesn't really matter which one you use though. Pressing that, what it's going to do is calculate the equation of our line of regression. It's showing it y equals ax plus b. So it's telling you that our value of a is what we're multiplying the x by and b is of course our intercept. Now this value of r that it's giving, this is the product moment correlation coefficient, 0 0.677, etc. So it will calculate that for us. Again, if you're doing this in an exam, use this as a way of checking. And you can build up things like SXX, SXY, and so on, using those uh, statistical variables that I showed you a moment ago. The only other thing I'm going to show you in this video is this graph mode. Now personally I don't find it very useful because I can't print directly from the calculator um, but it can be useful in giving you a rough idea of the shape of the data. So pressing that, again as with the calculations mode, really I would advise going into the settings first of all. And Settings is going to show us what different types of graphs we can get the calculator to draw. Coming down to the graph type you can see we've got these different choices and there are plenty more options available to you by cycling around. Scatter graph taking x from list 1, y from list 2, pressing graph 1 because that is the type of graph we've set up. There you go, there's a little scatter graph. Again, not massively useful. Settings for statistical graph 1, I could set up as graph 2 or graph 3, so I'll store in different types in there. Maybe we want a pie chart. There's a little pie chart and it gives us the data. Other ones you might find useful, if we cycle along, go to the next mode here, a box. Um, a box and whisker plot that it will draw. There you go. And the only other one really that I'm going to show you is a bar chart. And pressing exit, there we go, graph one, and there's our little bar chart. Again, not massively useful, but it depends on what you're doing as to whether you can find a use for this graph mode.